What is the difference between burnout and being stressed out? The answer? Not much. Burnout is simply a less stigmatized word professionals use to describe being stressed out. In other words, professionals burn out, whereas average people become stressed out. So whether you're experiencing burnout or being stressed out, the end result is the same. You've become overwhelmed by stress to the point it significantly affects your functioning mood and even your health. Stress can come from external sources such as the weather, stock market, relationships and life events, or from internal sources such as one's beliefs, thoughts, feelings, and physical conditions. Now at any given moment, each of us has certain resources we can employ to deal with stress such as coping skills, healthy habits, and good supports. Think of your resources as a container, like a coffee cup or mug. Now if your stress overflows the mug, then you'll feel overwhelmed because your resources are inadequate to contain the stress in your life. Now we all have different sized mugs because some of us have more resources than others. However, if your mug becomes chronically overflowing day after day, then you'll become stressed out. So what are some signs that you're stressed out or burned out? Well, here are some common ones. Feeling like life's demands are attacking you. Losing your patience more often than usual. Becoming more irritable in situations you used to handle. Feeling unable to relax. Having difficulty concentrating. Struggling to fall asleep or stay asleep. Losing motivation to do things you normally do, such as work, chores, hobbies, or social activities. Experience an increase in negative thinking. Feeling more tired and exhausted. Feeling increasingly hopeless and anxious about the future. Feeling inadequate or powerless. Experiencing more physical complaints such as headache, back aches, stomach aches, chest pains, or a racing heart. And using alcohol, drugs, overspending, overeating, overgambling, overworking, or any other compulsive behaviors or addiction to distract yourself from feeling overwhelmed. Now the more of these signs and symptoms you're experiencing, the more likely you're stressed out which really is your mind-body's way of telling you enough is enough. Whatever you're doing isn't working, so you need to find a better way to live or we're going to shut you down. I know that might be a difficult message to hear, but if you ignore this cry for help from your mind-body, then you'll risk having a complete physical and mental breakdown. So what should you do? First, you must see your primary care doctor for a physical examination to make sure your symptoms aren't caused by a medical condition such as an abnormal thyroid. And then if your doctor determines it's a stress reaction, you'll have to learn to listen to your mind-body so you can begin taking better care of yourself physically, emotionally, spiritually, and in relationships. Here are some questions to help you identify the sources of your stress. Am I taking care of my physical needs by getting enough sleep, eating a good diet, getting proper exercise, drinking sufficient liquids, seeing my doctor and dentist as recommended, protecting myself from dangerous situations, allowing myself to relax, keeping my hygiene up to par, and taking medications as prescribed? Am I taking care of my emotional and relationship needs by identifying and respecting my feelings and needs, setting healthy boundaries in relationships by being able to say no when that is best for me, asking for what I want and need, creating a healthy support system, allowing myself to grieve losses, avoiding abusive and manipulative persons, knowing my limits, and developing a loving attitude toward my imperfections? Am I taking care of my spiritual needs by finding meaning and purpose from the things I choose to do, by living mindfully in the present moment so I don't waste energy obsessing on the unchangeable past and uncertain future, by acting in harmony with my needs, wants, dreams, and values, 
and by establishing a growing connection to things greater than myself, such as friends, family, Mother Nature, or a higher power as I understand him. And finally, am I dealing with pain and stress directly rather than compulsively numbing or distracting myself by drinking, gambling, drugging, overspending, overeating, overworking, or being a compulsive codependent, which only creates more stress in the long run? If you said no to any of these questions, then you've identified areas of self-care that you need to improve. Next, you should evaluate where you can decrease stress by reducing demands and or by increasing your resources. For example, you could learn to say no more often to others, which would reduce the demands on you and add a new skill to your toolkit for coping with stress. Or you could learn to stop spending compulsively, which would decrease your financial burdens by learning to cope with stress through exercise and meditation, which would also add to your toolkit. Or you could learn and practice good sleep hygiene, which would add resources to your toolkit while reducing the stress of feeling exhausted every day. Improving self-care skills is a key to good stress management, and here's one more tip. Don't try to change everything at once. Instead, make one small change at a time to reduce stress, and then work on another one when you have a good handle on the previous change, which over time will significantly improve the quality of your life. If you'd like help in this journey, then visit my website, serenityonlinetherapy.com, to learn more about the online services I provide. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button and then subscribe to my channel to hear more from me. And finally, keep paying attention to your life. Until next time.